So all of the civil unrest, the uncertainty, the worry about our economic situation post COVID-19, this is all working out in Joe Biden's favor. About three or four months ago, before the pandemic, if you asked me who I thought would be winning in November, I'd say if it's between Joe Biden and Donald Trump, I think that Trump is the favorite. But now a lot of things are changing and Joe Biden is benefiting from this. So as you can see from Real Clear Politics polling averages, Joe Biden now has an eight point national lead over Donald Trump. And just a couple of days ago, CNN put him at 14 points ahead of Donald Trump. Now, this is probably an outlier poll, but it likely points towards a new trend because Donald Trump is just incapable of exhibiting any sort of leadership whatsoever during times of crisis. And this is working out in Joe Biden's favor because I think, quite frankly, people are just sick of it. And Donald Trump is only fanning the flames in this country. I mean, if you are a president, you are supposed to give us the platitudes, tell us the nice things that make us feel all warm and fuzzy, but Donald Trump is doing the polar opposite. So this is helping Joe Biden. Certainly, I think that part of the reason why Joe Biden is doing better is because he's not very visible as a nominee. And at first, I criticized him for not being visible because if you, you know, become the Democratic Party's nominee, in fact, he just officially clinched the nomination, um, you know, you have to speak up. You have to show the American people that you're a leader. But it looks like he doesn't actually have to do anything. He just has to sit back and watch the country burn. And, you know, Americans just have to see that Donald Trump is clearly unequipped to deal with this. And Joe Biden uh, rises in the polls. It's really interesting to see this. Now, um, I do want to give you a little bit of a caveat. At this point in time, in 2016, we also saw that Hillary Clinton had a pretty sizable lead over Donald Trump. Although I will say, nobody has had a lead this far over the Republican at this point in time. It doesn't matter uh, who it is, Obama, Hillary Clinton, uh, in recent history. So this really is huge. Joe Biden has a giant lead, and he's not just increasing his lead in the Rust Belt states that Hillary Clinton lost, um, but he's also possibly on the cusp of flipping Texas blue because they're now statistically tied in Texas. <laughs> Donald Trump and Joe Biden are statistically tied, and most voters in Texas support mail-in voting, and Donald Trump has been railing against that, I think, very common-sense policy, especially during a pandemic. So Trump continues to put his foot in his mouth, and even if Joe Biden is also putting his foot in his mouth almost every time he opens his mouth, he's doing it less frequently than Donald Trump. And so long as we keep up this pace, then he's looking good. Now, once again, I want to forewarn you because... Hillary Clinton was doing so well at one point in time that there was talks of her winning in a landslide or even possibly uh, flipping Utah. But here's one thing that I do want to say. At this point in time, in June of an election year, polls aren't something that I think we should dedicate much attention to. And a lot can change between now and November. But this is a current snapshot of what's happening in the country. So it's important insofar as it tells us how people feel Trump is responding to the plethora of crises that we're now facing. And it's obvious that he's not doing that great of a job. And if you think he is doing a good job, then I question your sanity. Uh, but just the mere fact that Joe Biden is actually increasing the lead that he has already had on Donald Trump is making Donald Trump lose it. He tweeted out, if I wasn't constantly harassed for three years by fake and illegal investigations, Russia, 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 and the impeachment hoax, I'd be up by 25 points on Sleepy Joe and the do-nothing Democrats. Very unfair, but it is what it is. CNN polls are as fake as they're reporting. Same numbers and worse against Crooked Hillary. The Dems would destroy America. Now, it's funny he says that because America is crumbling currently. The country is on fire and he's sitting by doing nothing. And when he actually chooses to speak out, he's pouring gasoline on the fires that already exist. So Donald Trump has proven that he is not capable of being a leader at all. And it's astonishing. It really is astonishing. Uh, and his authoritarian crackdown, I don't think is going to bode well for him 
in November if people remember that because the fact that you threatened to use the United States military against American citizens, that really is something that is unforgivable that every single person needs to remember. Trump bungled the response to COVID-19 and he's currently fumbling as we need someone to be a leader to heal the wounds that are open in this country. But more importantly, if you don't want to be a leader, you at least have to respond to protesters. And as they say, defund the police, he says, no, I'm going to actually increase funding. So he's basically spitting in the eyes of the protesters. And sure, Joe Biden also said he would not support defunding the police. But there's a difference between saying, I don't necessarily support what the protesters are pitching to us and Trump saying, I'm going to do the opposite of what you want. Like in a functioning democracy, if you see mass protests erupt across the country and spread throughout the globe, then what you do is you listen to them, you respond to them. He encouraged, I think maybe it was uh, Venezuela or Iran to actually listen to the protesters. Maybe it was Hong Kong, one of these countries. He encouraged their leadership to listen. And now what is he doing? Absolutely nothing. What little he's heard from the protesters, he's saying, I want to do the opposite of what you want. And it's why he is uh, starting to lose ground. And when you rail against mail-in voting, when this is something that benefits people, including Republicans, then it shows that you're tone deaf. And his Keep America Great slogan this time, I mean, how can you say that America is currently great and we want to keep things the way that they are? How can you make that your slogan? It's why Make America Great Again actually landed in 2016 because people acknowledged that the country wasn't in good shape, right? And that's why his uh, his vague slogan of make, make America Great Again, you can kind of attribute meaning to that. You don't necessarily know what it means, what he means by that. I think it has racial connotations, to be honest. But, you know, voters didn't see it that way. So now you can see that he hasn't changed up the strategy and it's hurting him. So if he keeps this up, he will lose this election in November. And one thing that I've been thinking about throughout the course of all of this is, let's say Joe Biden actually does beat Donald Trump. We are absolutely going to expect a shit show if that happens, because I think we can already anticipate how Donald Trump will behave. He's going to say that the election was rigged. He's going to say that the results were illegitimate. There may be protests, albeit on the right, you know, in defense of Donald Trump. Will he refuse to, you know, leave the White House? I don't know if it'll come to that, but it's going to be a shit show. And right off the bat, if Joe Biden is elected, he will not have the legitimacy that other presidents have because I think Donald Trump will try to do everything in his power to contest the election results. I don't necessarily know what I mean by contest. I think he'll complain about it, you know, on Twitter for sure. But what does that mean uh, functionally speaking? Does that mean that he just says, I'm not going anywhere? I mean, I don't necessarily know, but it's going to cause a lot of civil unrest depending on what he does assuming that he isn't able to catch up with joe biden and he does actually lose i mean what's that going to look like and it doesn't help that joe biden is a weak candidate that a lot of democrats don't actually support themselves so i mean regardless of what happens in this election we as a country um as americans got our work cut out for us because there's so much that needs to be addressed in this country that hasn't been addressed and you kind of see all of the uh frustration bubbling up currently you know it's all spilling over um so look it's gonna be interesting i wish i could say that i'm i'm watching this election as you know an outside observer but this is our country we're watching all of this so as it crumbles it's incumbent on us to pick up the pieces and try to figure out how to fix all of this and either way you know it's going to be a long road ahead of us to kind of repair the country and actually get us to a point to where we're making some progress again uh, but either way trump is not handling the fact that he is now losing according to polling uh, by a pretty large margin and if he keeps fumbling being a leader in the way that he is currently, uh, it, I think that these results are going to hold, but we'll see because there's a lot of time between now and November. You know, you, you, you know, you know, the, you know, the thing, thing. you're getting nervous, man, man.